I am so unfit, so unfit. So I was panting and running my ass off in the middle of the day, in the middle of the workout. It was just people like eating their lunch snacks and slowly. I'm here like <laughs> running. Like, <laughs> bro, this guy, I was like bolting it. Okay. And then I, I, I finally make it there. I get it. I get it. And I, and I got it. What is going on? Welcome to Roo's Room, where we're going to the nitty gritty of the artists and creators in the Australian scene. I am Roo, aka the Culture Black Kid, and today we have Jared Jeremiah, 21-year-old Australian Indian artist based in Perth, has dropped a couple tracks in 2023. Now, Jared, how are you doing? For real, for real, though, how are you doing? Um, I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm a, I'm a bit, bit tired, um, a bit, bit kind of burnt out, but I'm, I'm doing pretty fine. That's good. Um, yeah. Yeah, nice. You got much else planned for the day for today? I don't know. I'm Man. kind of dating myself, but <laughs> I'm just sipping on. I have to have a morning coffee. So mm-hmm. that's my must, or I can't open my eyes. What kind of um, coffee? Uh, just like anything strong. So I just got some milk mm-hmm. and like, but I, I have to have my milk nice and steam. I can't lie, I'm a coffee. Mm. So. Um, so like nice and steam milk, nice good good coffee, um, and really strong coffee to start the day. Mm-hmm. Done. Um, nice. But then I don't know, like for the last day I post gonna make some music on my days off and when I'm chilling, I just like try like set some time over to like just produce, practice. Mm-hmm. Um and even if nothing comes from it, it's just like practice if nothing comes from it, I'm practicing something, practicing yeah. a skill. Um that's if I'm productive. If not, I'm just gonna probably end up watching YouTube videos. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I I'm in the same boat and you know, YouTube is a, a deadly yeah. rabbit yeah. hole to get it's yourself just, into it's a spiral for me. Like literally a spiral. It's worse than TikTok for me. Like I literally yeah. spent hours and hours on it. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm I very much the same. Very much the same. Um, Now, I first heard of you uh, through your song with Agnieszka, 10 Feet. Um, Agnieszka's a friend of mine as well. Um, But when we first met face-to-face mm-hmm. is at South by Southwest a couple weeks ago at this um club event, I yeah. guess. I think it was Close Friends, a shout to Scruffs. Um, and... Freaking everyone was there that night. It, it was started. It, it started off a little slow, and then I turned mm. around and I saw Pania by the bar, and I was like, "Wait, hold up!" And then next thing I know, like everyone is coming through the yeah. through the door. I'm like, "What? What is going on right now?" Um, yeah. how was how was your South by Southwest experience down yeah. in, uh, here in Sydney? It was it was very um overwhelming to be honest, but it was amazing because like I feel like in Perth we're we're so tucked away from everyone like mm-hmm. industry, just even seeing other artists i know like oh, it's all these artists i like know on instagram and this and that and just putting faces to names yeah it was like whoa i know you i know you and it's like realizing how small the scene is mm. and it's like no matter like what different genres people make everyone still kind of hangs out together like, yeah i was hanging out with a country artist and like an r&b then like some <laughs> random pop and they were all just like in the club like, yeah it's, it's like the Australian, it really maybe kind of appreciate the Oz music scene because it's mm. like, it's so small and it's like everyone does a billion things. It's like, yeah. oh, you make music, you also produce, you also run a show, you do this. It's like, it's amazing. So it's like, um, I don't know, it was it was, it was really eye-opening, um, but it's also like, really like, damn, we're so tucked away in Perth on the other side. And mm. it's, it's interesting to see because sometimes people, especially like Sydney and Melbourne, they're like, oh, we they I feel like only recently they're starting to care what like WA is doing and mm-hmm. like what's happening in WA. But I feel like for the longest time there it's just been like I'm gonna support my scene, my local, my community. And it's yeah. like their community is Sydney, their community is Melbourne. Mm-hmm. But there's not much things like trying to push Perth out from Perth, just like kind of isolated there. That's mm-hmm. what I felt. But yeah, it was it was a really good experience. Yeah, nice. Do you do you feel like from being from Perth and you know there's there's some amazing artists from Perth but yeah. do you feel like there's a yearning from you know some of your music friends over in Perth to be like man I just wish I was in Sydney I was in Melbourne I was in Brisbane on the east coast closer to the action yeah well I, th- I think it's it's not a yearning really it's like what has to be done like right. most of most of my music friends have moved to like Melbourne and Sydney right mm-hmm. so it's like once you reach like a kind of a, pl- a place in Perth where it's like what can you push more it's like you have to kind of Either you're going you're going on trips, you're like spending a lot of money going back and forth from mm. Melbourne to Sydney, and that and that gets super super expensive. Um, or you just move there, and like I feel like when when I go to Sydney and Melbourne, I feel like it's really easy to see how people are like, we come here, and then people are like kind of take it for granted who live there. Mm. It's like you have everything at your doorstep. You have 
but it's but it's also like it's the whole thing about when it's when it's next to you when it's close to you you don't really like see like what you have and I guess that's probably a similar in Perth I, we probably have some crazy things in Perth but I don't see it because I'm so close to it yeah no that's fair that's fair and my my second question uh, in regards to that is uh, did you meet anyone else interesting at, at the South by Southwest uh, across that week or however long you were there I met I I met so many people to like honestly remember. Um, I feel like the most random people and cool people I met like were outside the music industry. Like, of course, the music industry cool. Meet all yeah. of them, meet the artists. And it's like, all right, mm. I expected to meet you, but yeah. like, because it was South by, like, I was just meeting some random like digital agencies <laughs> and some random. Oh, I met like some random engineer. I was like eating a kebab at three a.m. Mm-hmm. and then I was sitting down, and it turns out some some big like venture capitalist. I was just ha- talking about like random stuff about kebab <laughs> at like two a.m. <laughs> yeah, some random venture capitalist. Because I feel like that's the cool thing about South by South. Yeah. But it's also like, I don't know, like, why I met you. But it's cool. It's like, yeah. you, you meet random people, which is dope. Uh, I course. appreciate that. Um, and also, like, film people, like, all the, like, Netflix and all these kind mm. of film makeup. Sick. Um, I think it was cooler to meet outside the in- music industry. That was a more unexpected thing. Okay. Okay, yeah. dope. Dope. You know, you gotta you gotta have that diverse, you know, conversations yeah. as well. Keep, keep your mind open rather than box yeah. yourself in. Nah, yeah. I like that. Um, yeah. all right. So, you know, if you, you weren't sure and for those out there who might not know, um, the whole point of this, this show isn't to get the, so when did you get into music type questions, the super, super cliche things, trying to get to know you a little bit more mm. as an artist, as a person, yeah. more so even as a, as, as a person, hopefully. So my first question to you, my first formal question to you is what percentage of yourself do you think your circle really knows about you that's a really good question i i would i would like to say like close to 100 percent because i feel like my my circle is not so big like especially like in perth and in music in in, in the music it's very small but also Mm -hmm. generally my friends and stuff like that um and like lots of my friends know me as like just the idiot who like goofs around and, and if if yeah. he's there he's gonna be a menace like yeah in Sydney, i just menace it. everyone is menace. <laughs> um so yeah I'm, i mean I, I guess i'm a menace but um uh no nah, like i feel like mm, people mostly like really know a lot about me and I, but i also have like if you ask me like an important question i'm gonna like tell you the truth and of course like how i'm feeling so i think i think i try to do that and it's hard with sometimes people that you can't feel o- like open opening up like it's, mm-hmm. it's not easy to open it up um, but I just don't really surround myself by like that kind of people. So I guess it's 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 a small like, circle, but they know like everything I know. Yeah. No. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. And my follow up to that initial question is: How much of that percentage do you think you've shared within your music? That's an amazing question. Again, um, I okay, I was thinking about that, um, and I think I have more to share. To be honest, um, like quite often in my tracks obviously some tracks I've really written from like a really like strong like place mm-hmm. but I, I put myself in different scenarios and I, I think it's a really cool skill to have because I, I want to write for other people and, and produce for other mm-hmm. people and stuff like that yeah but um I put myself in a different scenario so it's not necessarily from experience most of my stuff right um it's mostly just kind of like writing a story crafting it and crafting where it will go and putting a narrative behind it mm-hmm. um so I think in my music, like the actual music, I would say seventy percent maybe. Okay. Um, but I I think I think what kind of like compensates for that is more so like my the branding around it mm-hmm. is that that's fully me. Like mm. I, I everything I do is just, just trying to be like, like that is me. Like I don't care what I make. I don't care what the video is. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's been really hard recently. It's like if you make like a really like stupid video or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, and it gets like zero views. It's like trying to detract from the actual results. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like um, I would say about seventy percent. But like my my brand and like just my content and stuff like that is kind of compensates for that. Nice, nice. And do you think you're sitting on the other thirty percent on the unreleased stuff, or is that how much would that maybe take it up to if we're, if we're including the unreleased? I, for the unreleased, I'm I'm really my whole thing is if I want to tell my story, I just I don't want to tell it in a single. I want to tell it like a, a really nice project. project, body of work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, because I, I just don't think it's enough to tell it a single. Like singles are just like bang pop, like it's two seconds really. Yeah. Um, so 
I'm I really want to work on a body of work and a longer one possibly mm. um that kind of allows me to, to to tell that um in a really unique way like um I'm really like fans of like John Bellion and stuff like that mm. um and he's he insane I was actually just l- listening to him the other day and that's why I reminded of, of him and he's insane in telling stories in like a long format but like the most interesting format ever mm. so yeah okay yeah fair enough fair enough well you know, hopefully through this main part of the interview, we get to know a little bit more of that close to 100% or I guess that 70% yeah. in, in the music. Yeah. Um, So we're going to take it back to primary school days. It's going to be uh, a little show and tell. Um, hopefully Jared has brought some of the items that I have asked him to do from his homework. If not, you know, at least a dope story to go along mm. with it. So let us get into it. Um, so my first question for you, mm. what is something that represents who you are as a person? All right, let me, let me, let me grab it. Okay, so, all right. I've got two ones. Mm-hmm. Um, so first of all, we've got this cap. I wear it a lot. Um, mm. Honestly, I got it from Universal Store as a joke, but turns out it's pretty dope. Um, I feel like, like, often I wear this out and people are like, oh, I don't want to be seen with you in that. Like, <laughs> I got it as Your a fashion joke. choices? Zero. <laughs> it's, I, it's, a, it's a zero fashion choice. But that was my whole thing. It's like, yeah. I just want to be like, proper goofy. But also, mm. it's like, I feel like people people see the side of me, but what they don't see is this yeah. side of me, right? So this okay. side of me is like, a, it's random, but like, hear me out. So um, this is like kind of my to-do list slash notebook. Um, oh it's wow! Really, it's really smashed out. Um, this was this was like pretty much in um uni, um and like I would I would use this. I would act like I'm taking notes. Like mm-hmm. when I was in uni, I'd be like, yeah, I'm taking notes in a lecture. Mm-hmm. I was planning releases, planning campaigns, oh, wow. planning planning rollouts, planning well, who should like it's literally that it's literally look planning new businesses helps them all look at that. <laughs> That's company cool. ideas. Yeah, so I feel like. Lots of people like often see me as like, oh, like he's just messing around. He's a medicine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I I overplan. Like my whole thing is about planning, and I plan so much. Mm-hmm. Um, often sometimes you can plan too much that you forget to stay present. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like those two kind of items really like complement each other. Um, mm. and it's like so at the face of it, yeah, I'm messing around and I'm a bit a bit dumb and whatever. But For like. Sure. Under it, I'm. Um, I try to be really like strategic and planned mm. out. Um, and really like I, I'm. I'm really a fan of like business and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And and how like the audience and marketing and all kind of stuff. I'm super super in, into it. Yeah. So it it's good and it's bad. But sometimes you just get oh, what's the marketing? What's this? What that? Yeah. But um, I think those items really represent me. Yeah. No. Um. That that makes sense. I, I like the duality of both of them um what were you what were you studying or are you uh, studying yeah i was studying i graduated last year um mm-hmm. i gr- was studying music and marketing so okay so uh, like a classical music degree like mm. playing beethoven which was really strange compared to what i'm Look, doing now i'm a violinist i'm a classical violinist Damn, yeah, 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 and, and trumpet player so um, like I can't, I can't lie i i forgot all the composers I studied, like oh yeah, literally... no. <laughs> fair enough. I don't yeah. blame you. Once the Gregorian chants kick in, then it's like yeah, right, I was like, bro, I'm stop, 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 stop. I'm done. Stop. Either, every time, ta- every time I come to class, would be some like really strange. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh yeah, yeah. I'm like, I, it's so what? Worse. It's so annoying. <laughs> yeah. Um. Nah. Like, so I studied music and marketing. Marketing is surprisingly cool. Like, I thought it'd be mm. generic and stuff like that. But I was like, this is dope. Um. It's like what it's what I kind of do in my time anyway mm. um but yeah um that's why like those kind of two interests are pretty present in my like my day-to-day right now yeah that makes sense and you know i guess it's not like you were studying like i don't know just just to throw it throw something out of my ass law and you're st- sitting in a to lecture be honest, and... i was i started i was gonna study law like oh, okay. i started for six months <laughs> i started for like six months doing it um i was like i was like yeah i want to I feel like you know what it was okay. in high school. I was the biggest fan of suits. Biggest. Okay. So like suits, like I was like, oh, I want to be a lawyer. Mm-hmm. Then I was like, okay, let, let's let's do law. It's like the most stupid and like naive thing to do, but I mm-hmm. did it. Um, but I, I really enjoyed law. I really enjoyed it. But I was like, what am I going to do with this in my life? Like I I enjoyed law. It was so interesting and so fun. But um, okay. I was like, what am I going to do with this? It's, it's a lot. Law yeah. law is a lot. Yeah, 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 it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, cool. The the duality. Yeah. I I I like the duality, and you know, mm -hmm. um, I guess when it's at at the core of it, and you know, you got you got millions of fans, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Which part of Jared do you want people to to under to know more? Do you want them to know the goofy side of you, or do the, do, do you want them to know the um the more a strategic. A strategic side of you that you know or you know maybe a percentage balance yeah I, honestly i want people i, I like to surprise people so mm -hmm. i would love people to know the goof side and everything like that but mm -hmm. you don't necessarily need they don't need to know what's happening behind the scenes it's mm -hmm. like it's like jared jeremiah can be the brand and i'm like i'm doing all the hard work but yeah. they don't know what's happening on day to day they don't know how many things i'm doing like what i'm writing up when i'm doing this so it's like they don't need to know that mm -hmm. and it's like it might like destroy the thing but i'm um, it's it's cool to like just make sure you, you, you it's it's happening and it's like mm. you you know you're not just like messing around like there's so many artists that like kind of just are the artists yeah per se. and it's like that's they they might mess around but that's what they do 24 7 and yeah. that's not always good in a session you got to be like in and out you got to be mm -hmm. like working so that's my thing like in a, if i'm at a session i'm gonna go there to like literally come out with something i don't yeah. i want to i don't want to leave when i'm not out of something so i'm going in i'm like pushing hard working hard so that's that's my kind of mindset of it okay fair enough fair enough all right let's go on to number two uh what is the last sentimental gift that you received from someone um number two is the one i don't really um, have I, I, i'll find one i'll trust you i'll find one i'll okay. send it to you um uh yeah i don't know i'll, I'll figure it out but i just haven't had a proper look around my stuff for, if like, not sentimental time. gift just mm -hmm. last gift last gift um oh this one was random as hell i'll, I'll grab this one because it's on my desk okay um, my uncle went to africa i think so okay um and basically he because I'm, I'm a drummer right i've mm -hmm. always drum like from childhood i'll be the noisiest kid mm -hmm. and so he he remembers me was being like just super noisy i'll be banging on things yeah. every time every time a family member would come over i'll be like watch me drum watch me drum i'm just like a i'm an attention grabber i need attention same right? me relatable. Um, exactly <laughs> i feel like it hasn't changed to be honest but uh um yeah so he remembered me at that and then he got me like this kind of interesting sculpture i guess mm -hmm. and it's like a drama and there's like tons of drums and like he's stretched uh i see it now you get it Sorry, it took me it? it took me a second yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah i think once you said it i was like oh now i see how the like all the yeah yeah, yeah. it's interesting i just, I just keep it here because it looks cool yeah nice um but yeah like also I have this one i don't know no, this is actually old. <laughs> That's like, <laughs> <from> Bali. <laughs> Fair enough. Bali. Yeah, but no. Nah, um, I feel like really like my people know me as like music, and I feel like I was intertwined with it within me. Um, as probably every artist it is, um, and every musician. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a a drummer that stands out to you as like the one who you know either got you into it or got you me know? In. Yeah. Oh, this is crazy. Yeah. So like. I feel like um, I this okay, this is a whole thing which I don't tell many people about, and I've tried to like Exclusive. separate this part um, from my life. But basically, I used to be big into YouTube covers, right? Okay. Um, so like as a kid, probably from the age of twelve, I started posting drumming YouTube covers. Mm. Like it would generally be me playing along to Megan Train. I mean, <laughs> okay, like that that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I posted them like regularly, like every week. I'd be on that grind, and I feel like that thought me that me the most like how to how to like really work hard how to do this mm. how to do that but um i was just watching lots of like youtube drummers like um there was one called cooper drummer um mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he was like it was cool he was like just drumming along to like taylor swift <laughs> I, I, I would like watch him every single day but like okay he's mm. so um and then i then i recorded it and then i posted it and just it would just be like a really like regular thing and my friends were like oh it's oh, nice yeah yeah nah, cool okay Nice. Now, hey, look, we got to start somewhere, you know. We we got to find that. We got to find that that initial inspiration, and I, yeah. I, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, it was dope. Yeah. Nice. Um. All right. Number three. Uh. What is the first most important piece of equipment that you ever bought or received? Yeah. Yeah. Um. I, okay. I got. I got a cop out answer. Then I have a non cop out answer. Okay. All right. So like, I feel like the cop out answer, but it's actually I got a story behind it. It would be the laptop, right? Mm -hmm. Um. This was. This was like a trashy, oh, it was not trash, it was a good laptop. Yeah. Um, but like, this is the laptop I started producing on. Like, literally, um, I would use this in high school. Mm -hmm. Like, so 
I'd be in math class. Remember this. So this this yeah. is my favorite favorite story, right? Yeah. I'll be in math class, and my goal was to study so much that like teachers wouldn't worry about me. Then I can do whatever I want. So solid. so that was solid my, I don't plan. Know, solid plan. So what yeah. I did is I was it was in eleven, I think so, and I was like, all right, cool, let's study so hard. I got I had a test and I like aced it or something. I got like ninety something yeah. flex, right? Yeah. And and then the teacher was like, "All right, this guy's this guy's smart." I was like, "Yeah, eh, 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 eh. yeah." <laughs> and so and then she, she she the best teacher. She let me in the front row of the class, yeah. literally put my headphones on while she's teaching, and everyone else has to listen. I was had my headphones on. I was producing. Oh in wow! The class. Wow! So I was I was like like just Ableton producing, and she'd be teaching the class. So the the, the C plus the D is the complex number of this and i was like just i don't didn't pay attention at all and that came back to get me that oh came no. back to get me the next test the next test i kid you not i got 14 percent. what oh my see that's the thing you don't play with maths yeah the i don't ma- play maths with, i learned that I, oh. I learned never to mess around with maths it's, after that oh. so i was like no nah, i'll i'll, I'll yeah. produce a lot but i'm not i'm not gonna do it in class so no that was with this laptop it happened that's funny um, yeah that's funny it's like the it's like the meme where it's like you miss one day of class and then you know everything's different and you don't literally, know and you can't keep up bro, i literally like i put my headphones in and then i open like i had a test i was like what the hell yeah i was like i <laughs> thought i'd be able to finesse this but i obviously it's calm it was calm oh uh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, that's um, funny. I like yeah, that's funny. Nah. Okay, copy out answer is is the laptop. I feel like that's, that's, it's yeah. It's it's a, it's an all right answer. Um, I kind of like that one, but yeah, I might maybe I'll stick with that. Okay. okay. Um, do you want to show the other one? I mean, it's I'm just, curious. You know, it's just I drumsticks. Can... To be honest, like, um, these were the, like my first drumsticks, and like, the, uh, yeah, definitely. The, tell tell pretty... us about the first drumsticks. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. So I got my first drum kit when I was like seven. Mm-hmm. And these ones basically like these have been they're so old, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, what I did, um, man, I'm just a I'm a finesse. What I did is I made them look like a like a limited pair of, of drumsticks. Mm-hmm. That's electrical tape, and I mm-hmm. taped it up with electrical tape, and yep. like I kid myself like I was playing some fresh drumsticks every time. I'd smash it, and it'll, these are broken. These are all broken inside, like it's broken to pieces. Oh wow! So if you touch it, it's gonna break. But like I've taped it up so much, and like playing on it, um. But no, like, just drumstick. So I, I guess it is what it is. Okay. Um, the, I feel like the laptop was better though. Laptop, that, it does have a funny. Is. It does have a funny story. Yeah, yeah. Um, cliche question alert before we go into the next one. Um, when did singing come into the fold then? Yeah. So um, singing came into the fold. Um, just just because I'm um, no one to sing on my tracks. Literally, mm-hmm. I would I would I'd produce. And then I, I have a sister who can sing, and I was showed to her. I have, I have other people that I know can sing, mm-hmm. and they were like, "Bro, this is trash." I was like, yeah. <laughs> "It was trash, to be fair." I was like, well, <laughs> "It was terrible, bro. Mm-hmm. terrible." Um, so I was like, "Oh, I guess I have to sing myself." Like, I did it so unwillingly. I did mm-hmm. not want to do it, and I did not want to know be known as a singer. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'd, I'd record into my like literally voice notes, and then like mm-hmm. airdrop it. And like kind of mess around with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that's how it started. And my best tracks were terrible, man. Terrible. Right. Like the worst. And then eventually I was like, hold on. Like maybe I should like actually try a bit more. Mm. And then I got a mic and this and that. Um, and then I started like really learning how to produce my vocals. And mm. the biggest thing is how to write for my vocals. That's mm. what changed it. Like, yeah. And once um one of my our music teachers told me, it's like, I think it was Radiohead, like Radiohead, like theoretically they're not a good or whoever i don't actually okay i'm gonna say this i'm gonna i don't really know who's in radiohead okay that's fair so the the lead singer in radiohead yeah theoretically is not like a good singer yeah but they write make it Mm. like for them and and that's why it's good so it's like you you write for your voice and that's what i really learned because it's like sometimes you're in sessions with artists and they may not be able to sing one song Mm. who's written by someone else but if they write for themselves and they sing their own music that's all you need really um, sense. so i feel like i learned how to write for myself and then also produce it a bit better so, okay okay yeah. yeah yeah that makes sense that makes sense yeah. um cool all right number four uh what is an object that or from sorry what is an object from or that represents one of your favorite gigs or sessions okay um i, I thought it was the last session so i just did the last session 
Um, it was a pretty good session, to be honest. Mm-hmm. This one was with Agnieszka, actually. It was in okay. it was in South by. Yeah. Um, so it was it was on like the Monday, right? And then we got in. Like I was going to produce for her. I've been producing quite a bit. Um, and we got in, and then I was setting up everything, chilling, this and that, this and that, catching up. And then I realized I forgot my adapter. Mm. So I, I, we couldn't record anything, couldn't play anything. This was a big, big amateur move by me. I was like, bro, come on, Jared. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, so we were in, I don't, I think it's Ultimo. So okay. we're in like a studio there. That's where I'm and- right now, actually. Hey, in the ABC dope. offices. In yeah, yeah, dope, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So we're around, we're around those ends. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was staying uh, around like close to Circular or Key or like somewhere there, right? Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. pretty big distance. Yeah, um, yeah. And I was like, oh, I have to go back and get it. Yeah. But like we only had the studio for a certain amount of time. And we spent the best two hours chatting. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, I have to go back and get it. And I am so unfit, so unfit. So I was panting and running my ass off in the middle of the day in the middle of the workout was just people like eating their lunch snacks and slowly i'm here like running (laughs) bro this guy i was like bolting it okay and then i i I finally make it there i get it i get it and i and i got it this is the adapter i got that oh my goodness i'm like and i'm like oh my god i have to run back this guy, this fatty here, he just gets an Uber. It was like a, such an expensive Uber. I got uh, an Uber for, it, was a, it was a five minute Uber. And that was pretty much the story of my life for the whole trip. I was like, everywhere I go, I'm like, I see he's walking. I'm getting an Uber. Yeah. Um, and then bank. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally. yeah. Um, uh, and then, yeah, we, we, we had the session. It was a success. Made a really cool like R&B track. Mm-hmm. Um, and I lost some calories. Hey, look, you know, that's hey, bro. What, you're getting something out of it. Fitness. Yeah. Health as well. <laughs> health as well. <laughs> health as well. Yeah. Uh, um, no. Nah, yeah. That was, yeah uh, if, if there's anything you need to take from that is always remember your equipment, which is funny because mm-hmm. I actually forgot my equipment for my stand today. Thankfully, <laughs> I'm in a room where I can have the mic heading down, but usually I got um, my mic arm that I forgot Ooh. the thing that plugs into this for. So... <laughs> Yes. Remember yes. your equipment, kids. Remember your equipment. And number five, uh, what is something that represents your dreams, aspirations within your field? Um. Yeah. So this one, I was honestly trying to like find a object and you know, find something that you know maybe I haven't looked at much. Mm-hmm. But then I realized this object has been like next to me the whole time, for mm-hmm. well, probably ten years. Yeah. And it's not a really object. It's more of a photo, more of a printout. Mm-hmm. So. This printout, you can kind of see how old it is. I printed this in maybe year nine. So it's like a picture here. There we go. Yep. It's a picture. That's Odessa, if you know them. So they're mm-hmm. like an electronic um, duo. And I used to be really obsessed with like Odessa, San Holo, Lewis mm-hmm. Child, that whole kind of thing. That's what got me into production. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, my goal is to be on a stage like that, like mm-hmm. being able to control the crowd like that having like a cool lighting system like that yeah. just really like playing and like kind of playing music um and i forgot about this until literally like 10 minutes ago i was like ah oh, i need something i need something <laughs> see a late a late homework do what you know hey, look <laughs> look you know it's better than you know sit, you you were just sitting in this interview doing making a beat whilst i'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, um no nah, but basically like yeah this one has literally been next to my bedside for mm. And it hasn't moved. Like genuinely, this is an exclusive. I've only moved it for the first wow. time. That's crazy. For this, in like, ten years, in ten years probably, ten, maybe more. But um, yeah, like I'm surprised it's still holding up. But yeah, like I actually don't listen to them much now. But that's fair. really like brings me back to my days. I'm like, damn, this is what I this is what I aspired to be as a kid. Mm. And I and I and I just didn't take it off my wall. I was like, I'll keep it there. Mm. And yeah, so yeah, dope uh, is. Is there a, an experience that you've had performing so so far that's like, wow, that was like euphoric. I want to like bottle that moment and relive it. Yeah. I mean, I feel there was probably my headline last year was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, where like people were literally like singing along. And, like, where was this? This was uh, in Perth. It was in mm-hmm. Rosemount. Um, okay. That was cool. And also like a couple of weeks ago, I played Telethon, which was 
basically this mm. kind of like charity raising event in, yeah. in WA and it's a big thing here and I grew up watching it like yeah. every every year I'd go to telephone and watch mm. it and and literally probably since I was maybe seven or six I'd go there yeah. So it was really crazy to be on the stage and be performing. And then and, and then the cameras are around you and it's like, oh fine it is. And you're three, two, one. And yeah, it was cool. like that, yeah. that was really yeah. cool. Um so it it really kind of replicated that kind of feeling. Um and yeah, that was really cool. Um, that's cool. That's really cool. That's really cool. Couple more questions mm -hmm. to go. Uh so what is a personal moment that stands out to you that has impacted your music in a certain way? Um I think it would be mostly in my like high school years, mm -hmm. which kind of um helped me or, or like change the way I make music. So like I had a teacher, he was my percussion teacher. Oh, mm -hmm. really? He didn't teach me percussion, he teaches me Ableton. Like mm -hmm. it would be instead of like playing drums, he'd yeah. be showing me his Ableton sets up. Like, yeah. Okay, that's yeah. that's the move. That's the move. <laughs> um and yeah, like I feel I kind of learned a sort of electronic sides of that and like really I just learned how hard it is to work in the music industry and how much work you need to put in. Yeah. Um, because I saw him, you know, hustling and re really just like he's like, I would say he said he once said he was like on the regular, at my best time, I would send 200 emails every like four days, mm -hmm. and he'll get about two responses. But then the one, then one time he got signed, I was like, I don't know. But yeah. basically, it's like really how much work you got to put in. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm I'm really just learning that after this. Um, I did recently went to London as well, mm -hmm. and that really really showed me. It was I was meeting other creatives, meeting just people outside of music, just people who are by themselves in the city and just move there and try to make something of themselves. Mm -hmm. It really like highlighted me. It's like, yeah, I might be working hard, but number one, there's always people working harder than me. Mm -hmm. um, and number two, it's like, while we're working hard, why not enjoy it? It's like, why, why not like try to like credit community around you? And it's like, yeah, fun collaborating. Of course. Um, and just making music. So it's like, it's really easy to be in a mindset where it's like business, work hard, strategic, this. But it's mm -hmm. also what I'm trying to tell myself is like, I got to work hard and do business and stuff, but I was just going to have fun and enjoy yeah. it really. And I feel like this year I've kind of lent, lent into that a bit more. Um, Because usually I just like stay in my room and make beats and email and whatnot. And mm -hmm. it's like, what, what is music about? It's about collaboration and bring people mm -hmm. together. Um, yeah. And that's kind of been one of my goals. So I feel like even going into next year, it's going to really be about whatever labels on it. Mm. whatever if you're writing if you're producing it's just collaborating and then yeah. I, I think this year I, I started off it like i did lots of collaboration tracks mm -hmm. and i think next year it's it's really cool to like continue that for sure for sure yeah, yeah there there is a there's an energy when you actually work on a song in person everyone's yeah. in the same room you're writing yeah. together you're producing together yeah. in comparison to you know you might make a beat at home and then send it through and yeah, be like yeah it's, you exactly. know it's cool and the song might turn out amazing but yeah nah the, even if it's, it's not your favorite song the energy from from being in the same yeah. room like there's been so many rooms i've been in and i'm like we might have not come up with the best music but man yeah. that experience is beautiful mm -hmm. it was so beautiful for sure um, and just creating something and i feel like that's why i'm going on all these like little kind of holidays or trips and mm. making music on them. Yeah. That's really eye-opening to work with new people, even just talk about their lives. And it's like seeing what they write about and yeah. where they come from and stuff like that, learning about new people. And it's a really intimate experience when you're like literally meet someone and then riding with them in the next two seconds. Like yeah. it's a very intimate experience. And, For sure. Um, I kind of I think I've learned how to really like get the most out of it. And then, but also like have a good time and, have a comfortable time when you do that. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And to the the first thing you said when you did your response about you know what your your teacher said in regards yeah. to work working super hard. Yeah, I remember at seeing as you you know you're a fellow YouTube binger. I'm not sure if you ever watched Day uh, Daystorm Power. Um, Power. He was like a rapper, but he also did like he did like he he did like raps, but it was like he was like solving a Rubik's cube, or you know he did like themed raps. And anyway, it was Maybe, around the yeah. like the early 2010s. Uh, YouTube era. Anyway, okay. he 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 had this quote that was like, um, whilst you're working hard to be the best, the best is working twice as hard to remain the best. And it's like, like it puts in context that, you know, whilst you're even working 
you're working ridiculously hard to mm-hmm. be there. Once you make it, it's not like cool, I'm done. Mm-hmm. It's like no, you you got to go even harder. So yeah. you know, yeah, I, I guess it really also puts things into context, and you know, be yeah. like, yo, like I'm I'm grinding now, but the 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 the, the, the hills, stop. yeah, the mountain, the the that is in this yeah. industry is, and and I feel like literally a couple like a couple of weeks ago, I was going through, I was like. Oh, I'm I'm working like exactly the same thing I was working like three years ago. It feels like mm-hmm. I'm just doing the exact same thing. Yeah. But I guess that's what you have to do. It's like it's you're just repeating the exact same thing and consistency. Yeah. Um, but it's it's hard to really realize that sometimes mm-hmm. you're like, oh, if you're doing the same thing, it's it feels like you're stuck in the same place. Yeah. But not necessarily. It's like if you're doing the same thing, you may be actually growing to something. Mm-hmm. So I just had to keep telling myself that. Yeah. No, yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Um well, yeah, that uh, is pretty much it um, oh, for, the, for the interview. Um, thank you so much for coming on. Um, it was a, a, a pleasure to talk to you um, and, you know, get to know you a, a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. So I guess my final question is what's happening? This is roll out the red carpet. What's come out? What's coming up? Roll out the red carpet. Yours. Um, so I, by the time this is out, I would have released a single with um holly hebe mm-hmm. um it's called chocolate uh it's really fun like indie pop uh track and yeah it's kind of like really delving into my pop side um my really like chill playful side and um, and that's a it's a really fun track i made it early this year in melbourne with a fest fest session again so we're like we were straight met each other had a session and we came up with this beautiful song mm-hmm. um so it was produced by me and calvin bennett and yeah it's a great track and then yeah. next year is just going to be another year of just lots of singles and hopefully at the end of the year, maybe a project. Nice. And I really just want to play a lot like next year, like hopefully last some festival slots or, um, you know, playing like, I don't know, just really like playing to out, outside gigs are so cool. I want to play some outside gigs. Mm. Um, so, and with my band, of course, Yeah, um, nice. my band is dope. So yeah, just playing a lot, releasing a lot. Um, and Messing around with the content, play, make, making some funny videos. Yeah, nice, nice. Sounds yeah. like you got a, a full full slate coming up, and you know, yeah. I'll be the first one to say that I'm I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah. but yeah, no, thank you so much again, Jared Jeremiah here on Ruse Room. Ah, uh, last thing, uh, what's your handle? Where where can people find you? Where can people find me? It's at Jared Jeremiah. Um, everywhere and on Spotify, just Jared Jeremiah. Um, yeah, sweet, sweet. I've been Roo, aka The Culture Black Kid. This is Roo's Room, and we'll catch you next time. Peace. Thanks, bro.